Hello, everybody. Welcome to Storm Log Number Five of the Scudbuster Diaries, Flagler County Storm Chasers. My name is Ed Sharkovich. On today's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about fog. We're at the time of the year when we're starting to get cold air fronts coming down from Canada, and with that cold air coming over the warm ground, we're going to start to develop fog. Our first fog advisory happened on Tuesday, November 7th at 1 o'clock in the morning. You can see in this National Weather Service broadcast, Flagler County is listed as well as the city of Palm Coast. And actually, the fog went from coastal South Carolina all the way down to Titusville, all the way over to Tampa, and just about every Florida county in between was under a dense fog advisory. This was the scene at sunrise at Matantis Woods Parkway by US-1. Over at the Agriculture Museum, everything looked very pretty, but visibility was actually down to a quarter mile or less. There are four different types of fog that affect us here in Florida. The first is radiation or ground fog, where you've got cold air that comes in over the warm ground. Then there's sea smoke or steam fog, where you've got cold air that comes in over warm water. Advection fog, where you've got warm air coming in over the cold ground, we'll start to see that in January and February. And then there's precipitation fog, where you've got warm rain coming through the cold air. Taking a look at some foggy scenes from around the county, this is a shot from Monique Futch, the other half of the Scudbuster Diaries here at Flagler Beach. This shot here is one that I took on a day when the temperature was 18 degrees, and you can see that steam just coming off the water. This was at Washington Oaks Garden State Park. The cool thing about this is that as the waves receded on the sand, the sand was actually steaming itself. Fog can be serene, fog can be pretty, but fog can also pose driving hazards. Reaction time, when it's foggy, changes quite a bit when you're driving. If we take a look at this picture put out by the National Weather Service, when there's quarter mile visibility, your reaction time to stop your vehicle is 15 seconds. When it drops down to an eighth mile, reaction time is half that. When visibility goes down to 100 yards, you need a little bit over three seconds to stop your car. And when visibility reaches 100 feet or less, you need one second to be able to stop your car without hitting anything. So, some advice, slow down. Use your low beam headlights so you can be seen. Leave plenty of distance ahead of you. Use your wipers and defrosters to keep your windshield nice and clear. Be patient. If traffic is stopping ahead of you, slow down, don't pass them. You don't know what's happening in front of you. Fog can be patchy. You can have a clear spot and then a very densely fogged area and you could run into whatever is in your way. Most importantly, plan for extra time and if the fog is very bad, put it off, wait for it to burn away. One of the big things in Florida is that it is illegal to use your four-way flashers while you're driving. This is a look at the actual Florida statute and right down here in the red box, it is illegal to use four-way hazard lights while driving in Florida. If you're gonna use your four-way flashers, the vehicle needs to be stopped. There are different types of fog phenomena. My favorite kind is the fog bow. In order to understand what fog bows are, we need to take a look at their close cousin, the rainbow. You may remember from high school science class that when a beam of white light enters a prism, it breaks the light down into its constituent colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Well, the same thing happens inside of a water droplet. As sunlight passes into the water droplet itself, it bounces off the concave back part and it reflects back out to you, the bystander, in its constituent colors. This is what makes a rainbow. There are two angles that you're gonna see rainbows at. The first one for a single rainbow is between 40 and 42 degrees off the horizon. If there's a double rainbow, you're gonna see those between 52 and 54 degrees from the horizon. Effectively, what happens with fog bows is that the water droplets are too small to break white light down into its constituent color. So what you get effectively is a white rainbow. If you take a look at this right here, these measurements are in microns. So uh, the smaller the particle, the more diffuse the white light is going to be. And as they get larger, these bands start to tighten up. When a water particle suspended in the air reaches one millimeter in size, fog bows will convert into rainbows. Here are some fog bows from around the county. This one took place here over State Route 100 out by Shell Bluff Park. 
This next one was up by North 20th Street in Flagler Beach. And my favorite one was at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Corona. This was almost a double fog bow. Pretty cool. As I was researching fog bows for this episode, I came across something that I have yet to see. It's called the Glory Spot. Take a look at this area of color right here down at the base of this fog bow. This shot was taken back in 2006 off the Golden Gate Bridge. That is pretty cool. Take a look at this next shot. Oh my goodness. This is something that's on my bucket list and I want to get this shot soon. Northeast Florida receives its radar information from two Doppler installations. One's up in Jacksonville, the other one's down in Melbourne. Because of the distance between these two towers, Flagler County sits inside of a radar blind spot. We are virtually invisible on Doppler radar from the ground up to 5,000 feet in the northern half of the county and up to 10,000 feet in the southern half of the county. Our job at the Scudbuster Diaries is to go out into inclement weather, to sit and wait and watch weather as it comes into our area, reporting to both emergency management and the National Weather Service so that bulletins and advisories can be sent out warning all of you. The only way to fix the Doppler radar gap that rests over Flagler County is to have a new Doppler tower put either in Gainesville or Ocala, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So to correct for this, the National Weather Service has teamed up with Flagler County Emergency Services by holding Skywarn classes periodically to educate Flagler County residents about the weather. If you want to be a Skywarn weather spotter, come join us Wednesday, January 31st, 2018 from 6 to 8 p.m. That's going to be at the Flagler County Emergency Services Building, 1769 East Moody Boulevard, Building Number 3, Bunnell, Florida. Come join us. We love going out into severe weather, but unfortunately, we can't be everywhere all at once. So, we're asking you for your help. If you experience severe weather in the form of wind damage, flooding, dense fog, lightning strikes, tornadoes, water spouts, beach erosion, or hail, let us know. We'll send out one of our photographers to come take a look, take pictures and video footage, giving you copies for your records, and then we are going to let emergency services and emergency management know exactly what's taking place in the county, and then send that data off to the National Weather Service. I'd like to give a shout out to Flagler County Emergency Services. You can go to their website, flaglercounty.org forward slash emergency. They've got all kinds of great advice on tips on how to make yourself weather ready and prepare the best for severe weather for next year. For the very best and latest in non-hype weather forecasting, take a look at Flagler Weather Info on Facebook. It's run by Flagler County Emergency Services and Bob Pickering does his twice weekly Flagler weather update. A lot of great information there. You can follow us, the Scudbuster Diaries, at edsharkphotoimages.com forward slash Scudbuster Diaries. We also do Facebook Live broadcasts. We're on YouTube. We have our own channel, and you can find us on Flagler County's YouTube channel. Watch us Friday nights at 8 p.m. Flagler County Television, Spectrum Channel 492, you can watch us there. There's also social media links to all of our shows on our Facebook page. And last but not least, I want to recommend Flagler County Assist React. It's a great group of volunteers that are trained in all aspects of emergency management support. Take a look at them on Facebook. Join up. It's going to help you stay prepared and protect your family. My name's Ed Sharkovich, and thank you for watching.